If you've ever done a Google search and been buried under results, then this guide is for you. Today, we'll teach you how hackers and security researchers find information on the internet on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Google is an amazing resource for searching the internet, and it's often the first tool that most people turn to when they have a search to do. Now, if you ever search for a software-related question, you might note that sometimes it doesn't actually work so well, and that's because Google doesn't actually work the way that most people think it does. Now, when you type in a search uh, query, Google actually interprets it as a bunch of different things that you might mean to search. And the algorithm for doing this is pretty complex, but basically it's assuming you don't know how to conduct a search yourself and you kind of need help. Now that's why you can get a bunch of unrelated results because it's doing a bunch of number crunching and trying to figure out how to best serve that request without actually literally searching for it. But by knowing how Google works, we can actually run literal requests and use Google as an incredibly precise tool for finding information. Now, part of this is knowing where to search for information, and the other part is knowing the exact kind of syntax you need to put into a Google search in order to produce an exact result. So that's what we're going to be diving into today in order to dramatically shorten the amount of time it takes for us to find specific information anytime we need to. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need a browser and an internet connection. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article that's linked in the description. Once you have a browser window open and an internet connection ready to go, then we can begin. Today, we're going to get into how to use Google to effectively find the answer to questions that might be pretty frustrating if you don't know how to search correctly. Now, a couple examples of this might be software-related things, so I'm just going to type an example and show what comes up in a typical Google search. So let's start with Python. So if we do a general question and we're not too specific, then if we go and take a look at the results, you can see the first one is actually from 2011. Now, it's pretty unlikely that uh, we're even programming on the same version of Python that was implemented in 2003. So a lot of these search results are immediately not useful. And for anybody who's looking up a technology-related question or anything that has to do with recent events, this can be incredibly frustrating. Now, anytime you're doing any sort of search that involves working with a current version of software, you should always limit it to results that are relevant. And probably the favorite tool I have is by clicking on tools and then clicking on uh, from any time to a specific custom range. Now, this can be anything from a date to a specific day that you want to get. And especially if you want to maybe capture something that only happened on the day that a news event happened, this is a great way of seeing everything that came out on the internet, either in a particular week, on a particular day, or if you just want to go to what I like to do on most Google searches and uh, limit it to the past year. Now, here you can see everything is in 2019 and 2018, so we know that this information is a lot more relevant and was more recently updated. So while it's still being indexed and we're not using any other operators, we're still limiting the results, which is kind of the point of this entire exercise, to cut out all the noise until we're only looking at the exact perfect result for what we want. Now, another thing that we can do to make this more helpful, especially for people that are looking for, for example, uh, programming related things, is learning the ways that Google might misinterpret uh, what we're saying and instead use their search operators to correct a search that might otherwise go wrong. Now, an example that I will give is if we're looking for the standard library uh, list in C++, we would type in std colon colon and then list and you should see you can see that all the uh, the suggestions are C++ related because it's a computer science question. But if I were to press enter, then it, Google would actually ignore this colon colon and instead would see STD list and start giving me a list of sexually transmitted diseases, which is not what I want to see if I'm in the middle of a classroom searching for a solution to a particular computer science problem. So to make this actually acceptable, there's a couple things we can do. And the first is to put quotes around it so that Google searches for this literally and doesn't interpret what we're doing as perhaps an operator or a suggestion on, you know, kind of what we're looking for without being too specific. 
Now, because most people aren't trained in how to search, Google has a lot going on behind the scenes to make sure that it's trying to do its best work and try its best job of interpreting what you want rather than what you say. So in short, it's kind of actually not even searching for what you tell it to, it's trying to make guesses about what you really mean and then bring you results that are relevant to that. So by using the quotes, we're saying, hey, search exactly for this. And then because we know more or less what's going to be coming up that we don't want to see, we can type the minus symbol and then type in something that we know will omit the majority of the results that we don't want. In this case, I will just type up transmitted. So if we run the search, we can now see this is all computer science related, which would not be the case if we had just run that search without any sort of operators. So you can immediately see how this could be something that might make it more useful if you're browsing the internet and need to find information quickly that isn't flooded by the wrong type of result. Now, another thing we can do is use the omit to make a search that otherwise would go awry, again, more palatable. So if we're looking for a politician, in this case, we'll look for the California uh, sorry, the Colorado senator named Dick Ball. If I type in Dick Ball, it's probably not going to be a very um, acceptable search if I were to run this without any specifications. Instead, rather than searching for every single web page that contains the word Dick and Ball, I can look for Dick Ball specifically and then use quotes again to say, I want to see things that are in Colorado and have to do with the Senate. Once I run the search, I should probably spell Colorado right, sorry guys. Then you can see that uh, even if I omit some information, I still at least get things that are related to the candidate and are not a bunch of things that otherwise might be inappropriate to search for. So here we're going to go a little bit more into the technical side and say, what if we wanted to find a particular type of file? Well, there's operators we can do as well. So let's say that we want to find a PDF file that's related to hacking. Well, we can use the file type and then a colon and then specify the type of file we want, which might be a PDF. And then we can say hacking is what we want it to contain. And we should see a list of files now that contain the reference word. Now, again, if we want to do a JPG, we can do that as well. And this is generally just a list of ways we can uh, use an operator to find a specific type of file if we want to get much more narrow with our search. So now let's say that we want to find a PDF, but we want to find it on a specific site as well. Well, we can use the site operator to type, let's say, null byte. and then use the file type PDF and see if we can get any PDFs that are on the website. Now, if not, it'll try to pull pretty much anything it can, but uh, because we're trying to identify exactly types of files, we can look on, let's say, a news website, and we should be able to see, here we go, a PDF file that's hosted on this website. Now that's what we wanted to do, to be able to locate a specific type of file on a specific website. And you can see that this is much beyond the typical Google search where we're just spraying the internet at large. Now we're actually searching through one site in particular and we're attempting to find one file type as well. And we can get even more narrow if we wanted to kind of bring it down to, let's say a specific word within that file. Now, another useful thing you can use if this all seems a little bit confusing is the advanced search option. Now, if you go to google.com and then slash advanced underscore search, all the options and even more have been broken down into this handy web interface that allows you to pretty much lay out your search in exact parameters. Now, you can see this is either all the words, this exact word or phrase, which has the same result as putting it in quotes, any of these words, which uh, you can also just type the word OR in all caps, uh, none of these words, which is the minus symbol that we used before. And we can also use a range, meaning if we want to have something between one number and another, we can specify those numbers so we don't have to search for each individual thing. We can search by language, by region, the last update, the site or domain, which we learned in to just use as an operator. We can also look for where the term's appearing on the page, whether it's in the title, in the text, in the URL, or in the links that the page actually offers. 
We can also show the safe search, which is useful for searching politicians like Dick Ball. And then if we're looking for a particular file type, you can see there's really a lot here, including the Google Earth files, uh, Microsoft Excel, Shockwave Flash, Rich Text. It really uh, is a pretty extensive list of things you can search for. Now, if you're also looking for, for example, files that you can use for something, they also filter things occasionally by whether or not it can be used commercially, but not all files are sorted this way, so this one might return some limited options. All in all, these are a great set of tools for you to be able to cut through anything that might be providing too much information that's not related to the topic you're actually searching for. And this can save you time every day by cutting down the number of searches you need to do in order to learn something to get back to whatever it is that caused you to ask that question in the first place. The average person can make use of these basic tactics to cut short any search for information by using common sense tools like cutting out any results that aren't from relevant time periods. Now, if you're searching for a news event, or if you're even just searching for maybe a Stack Overflow article about what you need to do to solve a particular problem, this can make a 20 minute frustrating flow through a bunch of different uh, types of nonsense replies a lot shorter and more organized if you know exactly what you're looking for and how to find it. If you have any problems applying these techniques, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.